For this unit, we're going to start with the word congruent. So on your instructions, I'm even going to use it. I'm going to say complete each congruent statement. So congruent in geometry, what it means, same shape, same size. So when I give you a, con a statement, and I'm going to call it congruent statement, for congruency, not only same shape, same size, but I'm also going to start using a little symbol. You see this right here. It looks like an equal sign with a wiggly thing on top. That means that this shape right here, this means same shape. The equal sign means same size. So congruent means same shape, same size. I could be talking about angles. I could be talking about uh, line segments. I could even say chairs. Two chairs are congruent because they have the same shape. They have the same size. So when I give you a statement, this statement right here is very, very strong. Now a triangle, because I have triangle as our Q. So I can imagine there's a triangle and I'm going to call it S R Q. It's congruent to triangle T U Q Q. Okay, so there's another triangle, and this triangle is called T U Q. Those letters basically represent the corners of the triangles. Now there's a there's a few statements in here. Once I say two triangles are congruent, there's a few statements I'm going to say. If you look at this segment with this segment, I'm going to say those two segments are equal. Every time we talk about a segment, we use two letters. The order of the letters doesn't matter. So from a triangle on the left, notice how the letters are S and R. So I can say the segment S, R is congruent to segment TU. Now, in my case, I drew the little line segment on the top. In your case, you cannot type in the segment, so just type in the letters, SR equals TU, okay? If I ask you to do that. So that's one statement that comes from that congruent statement. I can also say, I can compare, let me use green. I can compare this side with this side, and I'm gonna say those two are equal. So on the triangle on the left, the letters are, I'm using for that segment are RQ. So I'm gonna say RQ, right? I'm not gonna use the, the segment on the top because we cannot type those in. So I'm just gonna say RQ. And then the other segment, I could say UQ or QU. The order of the letters does not matter. So the two letters are U, Q. So I'm going to call it Q, U. As long, for sides, as long as you use the two letters, the order does not matter. So call it U, Q or call it Q, U. The order does not matter. Another segment I can say is S, Q is equal to T, Q. So, so far, the initial, the initial statement, so far we've gotten three of them, right? The triangle has three sides. So three statements with relation to sides. Now, another statement are angles. Every time we have an angle, when we have an angle, let me focus on this angle right here. I'm going to say this angle is equal to this angle. When we talk about an angle, right right here I marked it so you guys can see it. When we talk about an angle, I can either use one letter or all three letters of the triangle. Now, I can say angle S is equal to angle T. Since we don't have the angle symbol, I'm just going to have it like this, S is equal to T. Angle S is equal to angle T. I can also say Q, I'm gonna, this angle, Q is equal to this angle, which is also Q. So Q is equal to Q. Following the same idea, R, the angle R is equal to what? Yeah. 
angle R is equal to angle U. Notice I'm getting a lot of information from the initial statement. But interesting for angles, the angle S, I could call it a different way. This angle, it's made by, I'm gonna use all three letters, but make sure you keep S in the center. So I could have called it R S Q is equal to U T Q. Now, one interesting part, follow the order of the letters. Looking at my statement here, R is the second letter, so I'm gonna call it U. See how we have that statement here? Angle R is equal to angle U. I don't have the symbol for angle, so I'm just gonna call it letter U. Let's take a look at my second statement. The segment EF is congruent to what? Okay, so now look at EF. EF are my first two letters here. So I'm gonna match it with the second two letters here. So I'm gonna say the segment EF is congruent to the segment FE. You're gonna answer a few questions like that. Now, we have a rule that we call segment addition postulate. Now in geometry, I don't expect you guys to memorize the names. I said it right now, segment addition postulate. Don't expect you to memorize all the names, just expect you to be able to understand what they mean. Segment addition. Okay, so segment we, we talked about last week. Segment is a part of a line. Addition means adding. So segment addition postulate, and postulate means rule. Segment addition postulate means I'm basically going to be adding segments. So here, find the length indicated. Find the length DF. So I want to what's the distance between D and F? That's what I want to know. Uh, part of it is 3. You guys see from E to F is 3, but I don't know how big it is from D to E. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to solve for X. There's, a, there's an X in here. Interesting. Notice how if I add these two segments, I go from D to G, right? So let me start by that. Let me just go 9X minus 1 plus 13X plus 1. I'm going to add the segments because notice that's the distance from D all the way to G. However, I want you to pay attention to this segment. I'm using that segment twice, right? They overlap. I wish I knew how big is that overlap. That overlap is three. So that overlap, I'm counting it twice. When I added the two segments, I counted the segment, the overlap twice. So let me subtract it one time. So let me subtract three. So I added the two small segments and I subtracted the overlap because I need to count the overlap just once, not twice. Okay, so that's the whole segment from D to G. Hmm. Now, when we're solving for an X, I have to let this equal to something. Now, I wish I knew something about the distance from D to G. Oh, I do know it. The distance from D to G is 18X plus one. So I'm just gonna solve, I'm gonna let this equal to 18x plus one. So again, notice how I added the two small sections and equals the big section, right? But when I added the two small sections, I subtracted the overlap because I want the overlap to count only once. Now we know how to solve for x, so that's pretty simple. Let me separate the sides through the equal sign. Let me combine my like terms. When I'm looking on the left side, when I'm looking at the x's, 9x plus 13x, I'm just going to combine that. I'm going to call that 22x. Combining my like terms, negative 1 plus 1 minus 3, right? I'm combining those that don't have an x now. Negative 1 plus 1 minus 3, that's negative 3. So I have 22x equals... Now on the right side, nothing I can combine. 18x and one, they're not like terms. So I'm just gonna leave this side as 18x plus one. 
all I did, I just wanted to combine like terms. Now, I wish I could continue drive, uh, combining like terms, and I will. I notice that I have x's on both sides of the equal sign. So let me put them together. To avoid negatives as much as possible, let me move my smallest x. So 18x, let me move it here, minus 18x. So I'm going to put all the x's on the left side. And then this minus 3, let me move it to this side as a plus 3. One thing I want you to notice, my numbers that I moved, once I moved them to the other side, I switched the sign, right? We talked about this last week. When you move numbers from one side to the other, don't forget to switch the sign. All right, on the left side, 22x minus 18x, that gives me 4x. On the right side, 1 plus 3, that gives me 4. Divide by the number of in front of x, so I end up getting that x is equal to 1. Cool. Now, if I type in 1 and I check my work, it's going to tell me I'm, I'm wrong. I'm incorrect. If the question was solve for x, yeah, that would be fine. x equals 1. However, the instruction here, it says find df. I need to find out the distance between d and f. Now, I'm going to compare it with this thing right here. From D to F is the same thing as that segment. I know that segment is 9 times X minus 1. I just solved for X. I said X equals 1. So I'm looking at this as 9 times 1 minus 1. So I want you to solve for X and then use it. So 9 times, X, nine times 1 minus 1, my answer ends up being 8. So I'm not asking to solve for x. I'm asking to solve for x and then use it. I wanted to know what's the distance between d and f. But you got to solve for x first. All right, let's take a look at question number four. The two small segments. Let me add the two small segments. I'm looking at this segment and this segment. So let me add them up first. So x plus 8 plus 2x minus 5. Notice I added the two small segments. But there's an overlap, right? Let me cut this right here. Let me show you guys. There's an overlap. So I have to subtract the overlap. I have to go minus. How big is the overlap? 2x minus 10. Now, because my overlap has a plus or minus, let me put it inside parentheses. 2x minus 10 equals. Okay, so again, I added the two small segments and subtract the overlap. Now, this is going to equal to the entire segment, which is right here. 23. Okay, that's easy. The whole segment is 23. OK, I'm going to use this information to solve for x. First thing, got to get rid of parentheses. So first of all, let me write x plus 8 plus 2x minus 5. That has nothing to do with parentheses. Now for the parentheses, let me distribute the negative. So that gives me negative 2x plus 10. Right, Negative times a negative is positive. So negative 2x plus 10 is equal to 23. Okay. Now the left side of my equal sign, there's a bunch of things. So let me combine my like terms. 1x plus 2x minus 2x. So 1 plus 2 minus 2. That gives me 1x. I'm not going to write the one in front of it, just the 1x. Now when I combine those that don't have a letter, I'm looking at 8 minus 5 plus 10. 8 minus 5 plus 10 is 13. So plus 13, and this is equal to 23. So x plus 13 equals 23. Nice, that's not that bad. I want to have the x by itself. So this plus 13, let me move it over as a minus 13. So I get that x is equal to 10. 
Again, if the instructions were solve for x, I'm done. But the instructions in this case tell me find gi. So I need to find out the distance between g and i is this distance. Hmm. Is there a segment that is that big? Yep, it's right here. That segment is 2x minus 5, right? Let me use the blue for that. The segment is 2x minus 5, but I know that value of x. So I'm, instead, I'm going to work 2 times 10 minus 5. Notice I'm using the 2x minus 5, but instead of x, I'm using 10 because I know the value of x. Okay, so 2 times 10 is 20. So I have this as 20 minus 5, better known as 15. So cool. That's my answer. 15. Solve for x and use it. Let's take a look at a couple more examples. Let's take a look at number 5. Before I add the two small segments, all right, this is a little bit different than the, than the first two examples. I know later on I have to subtract the overlap. When I separate, oops, when I separate it through here, this is the overlap. The only thing is that I don't know how big is that. So before I move on, I need to know how big is the overlap. Okay, there's two ways on how to do it. We can use this segment to find the overlap, because I'm going to compare it with here. Or we can use the other segment. You can use this segment with this part to find the overlap. It doesn't matter which one we use. So since I already have this highlighted, OK, I'm going to have that. So it seems like on this segment at the bottom, I have letter-wise, I have a 2x. On the other one, I have no x's, right? Or better yet, for us to, I want to prove a point. So instead, let me use these things right here. OK, so in the segment at the bottom, when it comes to letters, I have four x's. On the segment on the top, I already have three x's. And I, they need to be the same amount of x's. So I'm missing one x, right? So I'm going to put one x here. Then when it comes to non-x's, this thing says minus 2. And this one says minus five. They have to equal the same thing. So how can I balance that? Well, I'm going to add a plus three here. Because negative five plus three is negative two, right? I'm making it balance. Cool. Now I know the overlap. So let me erase this. Now I'm going to add the two small segments. So I'm going to add these two small segments. So I can go 4x minus 2. Plus 2x plus 5. And let me subtract the overlap. Equals. OK, now I need to find out how big is the whole thing. OK. I have this plus this plus this. That's the whole thing. So here on the right side, I'm going to have 3x minus 5 plus x plus 3 plus 7. Cool. Let me separate this through the equal side. If I have any parentheses, let me get rid of parentheses first. The way I'm going to get rid of parentheses, let me change this to blue so we don't get confused. I'm going to distribute this negative, right? That's how I'm going to get rid of parentheses. So let me copy this as 4x minus 2 plus 2x plus 5 minus x minus 3. So all I did was get rid of parentheses. On the right side, I don't have parentheses on the right side. So 3x minus 5 plus x plus 3 plus 7. First thing that I did, get rid of parentheses. 
Then let me combine my like terms. 4x plus 2x minus 1x. So 4 plus 2 minus 1. That's going to give me 5x. And then negative 2 plus 5 minus 3. Use a calculator if you need to. Negative 2 plus 5 minus 3, that's 0. So I can write a plus 0, I can just ignore it. I'm not going to write anything. So on the left side, I just have 5x. Because 0, basically, they cancel each other out. They cancel all out. Now on the right side, let's see what do I have. When it comes to letters, 3x plus 1x, it's 4x. Number-wise, negative 5 plus 3 plus 7. Negative 5 plus 3 plus 7 is 5. Okay, so I have the 5x is equal to 4x plus 5. So this 4x, let me move it over as a minus. Don't forget to switch the sign. So I get that 1x is equal to 5. Cool, I can find my answer now. So let's see. I found the value of x now. So I need to find the distance between t and r. Isn't that x plus 3 plus 7? So I'm just going to go 5 plus 3 plus 7. That gives me 15. Nice. Let's take a look at one last example. Oh, there's not that many segments here. Why? Because this whole thing on the top, and when I mean whole thing, I mean all of this combined, so if I add them all, is the same length as this. So I'm just going to go, and let me go with red. I'm going to go 6 plus x plus 3 plus x minus 3. Notice I added everything on top equals 4x minus 4. Okay. If I have parentheses, cancel them out. I don't have parentheses, so I don't have to get rid of them. Now, let me separate my size to the equal sign. On the left side, let me combine like terms. 1x plus 1x, 2x. Number-wise, 6 plus 3 minus 3, it's 6. On the right side, nothing I can combine. So let me call that 4x minus 4. Now, let me continue combining like terms. I'm looking at the x's. Honestly, I'm going to move the smallest x. I want to avoid negatives if possible. So I'm going to move the smallest x. So positive 2x, I'm going to write it here as a negative 2x. Positive 4, let me write it here as a plus 4. Again, notice how I changed my signs. From negative, I move it to positive, And from positive, I move it to negative. Don't forget to switch your signs. So on the left side, 6 plus 4 is 10. On the right side, 4 minus 2 is 2. So I have the 10 is equal to 2x. Let me divide both sides by 2 because it's the number in front of x. So I'm going to find out that x is equal to 5. Cool. I know the value of x. Now, my instruction here says find the segment hi. So the distance between h and i, this one. Hmm, I know, I see that it h, i, it is x minus 3, but I know the value of x. So in reality, I'm looking at 5 minus 3. All right, well, that section is 2 then. The length of that segment is 2. Let me show you what we did today, so that's how you know what to do.